Romeo Zondervan might have been in two minds about England when he arrived here from Holland in 1982, but he hasn't regretted making his home here. Neither has Sergei, although he looked slightly uncomfortable when his club captain offered to take him for a flight over Ipswich. Ipswich is Sergei's window on the west, but could he make more of what he sees here? So where are we going now, Martin? First of all, you need some lessons, of course, and that will take some time. Um, I settled down here in this country after 12 months. It took me a long while to settle down, to get used to the game, used to the people. Uh, of course, it's only across the sea. For me, for Sergei, it's going to, be, going to take a bit longer than that. It must have come as a great culture shock to him. I can imagine that, yes. Big shock. Neighbors, everybody needs good neighbors with a little understanding. One of my great pleasures of, of being uh, in the West and in Ipswich is being able to spend more, far more time with my own family, with Olga and the two children. This might sound fantastic to you, but uh, you have to take into consideration that a, a Soviet footballer is quite different from a footballer in the West. Oh, you should talk nice with her. Thank you. If I spend 20 days a year with my family when we in the Soviet Union, I'm very lucky because before each league match, we spend two days away training at our special base. And before an international match, we have to spend a week's preparation at our international base. And then if you take into consideration the time we have to spend traveling to play away matches throughout the, the length and breadth of the Soviet Union and the time we spend playing international matches in European countries, you'll appreciate how lucky I am now to be spending more time with my family. Pepsi isn't rationed in the Soviet Union yet, but there are still shortages, food queues and rising inflation. Mikhail Gorbachev's reforms are bringing change, but not prosperity. It all depends on how you look after the ordinary folk. And if socialism looks after the ordinary folk better, you'll say socialism is the best thing. But obviously, it would seem that the capitalist system at the moment is looking after the, the simple people of the ordinary folk better. And so you'd have to put it, perhaps, that the capitalist system is better at the moment. Before I left the Soviet Union, there were quite a lot of products in the shops, but it's no secret that during the last year they've become a lot less. In this country, there's a lot greater choice, a lot of foreign goods particularly. We can't find these in the Soviet Union. I think they're Spanish. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Before I came here, I'd never seen so many vegetables. We only have the vegetable that's in season at the time at home. Here, the family like boiled vegetables. We never used to boil them in the Soviet Union. We always ate them raw. Olga Baltacher is now spoiled for choice when she wanders around Tesco's. Back in the Soviet Union, the politicians may soon have to make some bigger decisions about their own economy. I don't understand much about politics, but it's evident there is glasnost and more freedom. But I don't understand why it's not working. There's no petrol, there's no food in the shops. The people want something, but it's not happening. <laughs> Yesterday I was in Pate Patesons. Where are you? Yes, and cheese was six. Uh, six 30 a kilo. 6.30? Yes, and bananas via 2.25. It's terrible. <laughs> what does it? It's terrible. <laughs> really terrible. Gillian Holt, a Russian teacher at Ipswich School, is helping the Baltachers get to grips with their English. Okay. Can you tell me about your hair? I have got long... Uh, I have. I have got uh, short brown hair and... They have lessons together twice a week, but they could do better. Can you tell me about the colour of your hair? I have got uh, short 
Грехе Блю Иес. Иес? Иес. Блю Айс. Блю Айс. Бета, Блю Айс, Бета. Иес. Блю Айс, это больше Бета. This is the, the first Christmas I will have spent in England, so it's hard to me, for me to make a, an objective comparison between Christmas in the Soviet Union and Christmas in England. But what I've, I've noticed is that Christmas comes a lot earlier. There's a, a great air of expectation in the town. The windows are full of goods. People are buying. The, the town is lit up at night. There's a great feeling of, of Christmas approaching, and, and the preparations are taking place much before Christmas. The only thing we miss is our mothers, our brothers, our friends in the Soviet Union, people that we care a great deal about. But it, it, as a compensation, I must also say that these friends have been re replaced by many English friends who have shown us a lot of care, a lot of attention and great hospitality and made us feel very welcome in this country. The children are very excited by the prospect of Christmas coming. They've already been to town and seen the, the light the, and, and the brightness of, of the town. And of course, they know about the presents and they're all expecting presents from your father Christmas. The Baltachid children go to Hanford Hall School in Ipswich. They aren't singled out in any way because this is the most ethnically diverse school in Suffolk. Nearly 40% of the 320 pupils are like Sergei and Ileana children growing up in a foreign country. It's a great school to come into because so many children are facing the same problems. So many of the children coming in here come from a different environment, different culture, and uh, I think it probably helps to reinforce the family feel that, that they need. So yes, they've had difficulties, they've had um, adjustment problems, but I think they've coped remarkably well. I like the fact that in schools here, the children learn through play, particularly younger children like my daughter. They willingly go to school. In Soviet schools, the children have a heavy program right from the beginning. All kids are special. Sergei and Lena are no, no more special, no different to any other child. No particular reference was made to who they were, where they came from. They were just two more children coming into the school at a time when many other children were coming in. Sergei Sergeyevich and, and Lena are, are they're bright, lively, attractive children. Make friends easy. Especially when you play football. I mean, with the boys, that's an advantage. Sergei Jr. is already part of the Ipswich Town setup. Training at Portman Road every week with a group of talented schoolboy players. He scored six goals in one game earlier this season, and he seems sure to follow in his father's footsteps. I think his potential is great and uh, you know he could well become a professional footballer especially if he's in the hands of the kind of trainers that he has at Ipswich at the moment there's a young trainer who takes the school of excellence and I've been watching him take the youngsters at, at training and he just has an excellent gift of coaching youngsters and I've watched the the variety of, of exercises and skills which he gives the youngsters and they, they love it and they're learning and if Sergei can continue in the hands of such trainers uh, and managers, you know, for the next few years, I'm sure that he can realise his potential. If I had to repeat the 10 years that I've just spent playing professional football, you know, I'd have my doubts whether I'd want to do it again because it's an extremely hard life. There's the, the daily training, there's the matches, there's the travel, there's the competition, there's the danger of injury. And, you know, you're asking whether I'd want my son to, to follow in my footsteps, but I can see it in his eyes, I can see it in his heart that he wants to be a footballer and I think it's up to me to encourage him in what he wants to do and to set him a good example to follow.
to, and to tell him how difficult it is and how the, he must work very hard to achieve success. But as Sergei himself knows, there's a fine line between success and failure. Some people may think I'm a failure, but uh, for my own self-respect, I, I must ask you to consider that when I came to England, I came as a, a, an international sweeper. I haven't had the chance to play in that position at, at Ipswich. It's nobody's fault. It's just that the tactics of English football differ from the football in the Soviet Union. But I would prefer you to ask that question when you'd seen me play in my own position as sweeper, the position which I know well. I want to work the rest of my life in football. I'm only 31. I think I can still keep on playing when I return to the Soviet Union. There's a lot of football inside me. I've got a lot of experience. I know a lot of football. And I don't want all that football to stay inside me. When I finish playing football, I want to be able to convey it and give other people the benefit of my football experience.